So as we talked about in the last video, we've seen many examples of starting with a geometric series expanded out, and then assuming that its common ratio, that the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, finding what the sum of that might be. And we've proven with this formula in previous videos. But now let's go the other way around. Let's try to take some function. Let's say h of x being equal to one over three plus x squared. And let's try to put it in this form. And then once we put it in that form, we can think about what a and our common ratio is, and then try to represent it as, a act for, represent it as an actual geometric series. So I encourage you to pause the video and try to do that right now. So let's see, the first thing that you might notice is we have a one here instead of a three. So let's try to factor out a three. So this is equal to one over three times one plus x squared over three. And now we can, since we don't want that three in the denominator, we can think about this as one over three. So we could say this is one third over, 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 let me do it in that purple color. One third over, One, and we don't want to just add something, we want to subtract our common ratio. So one minus, and let me write our common ratio here in yellow, one minus negative x squared over three. So now we've written this in that form. And so now we could say, we could say that the sum, let me write it here in, let me do it in a new color. So let me do it in blue. So now we could say that the sum from n equals zero to infinity of, see our first term is one third, one third times our common ratio, so our common ratio to the nth power. Our common ratio is negative, negative x squared over three. And if we wanted to expand this out, this would be equal to, so the first term is one third times all of this to the zeroth power, so it's just going to be one third. And so each successive term is just going to be the previous term times our common ratio. So one third times negative x squared over three is going to be negative, let me write this, negative one ninth x squared, right? To go from that to that, you have to multiply by, let's see, one third to negative one third, you have to multiply by negative one third, and yet we multiply by x squared as well. And now our, our next term, we're going to multiply by negative x squared over three again. So it's going to be plus, it's going to be plus, the negative times a negative is a positive, plus one over 27 x to the fourth, x squared times x squared, x to, x to the fourth power. And we just keep going on and on and on. And when, when, x when the when our or I should say when this converges so over the interval of convergence this is going to converge to h of x now what is the interval of convergence here and I encourage you to pause the video and think about it well the interval of convergence is the interval over which your common ratio the absolute value of your common ratio is less than one so let me write this right over here so your our absolute value of negative x squared over three, the absolute value of negative x squared over three has to be less than one. Well, the absolute value, this, this is going to be a negative number. This is the same thing as saying, let me scroll down a little bit. This is the same thing as saying that the absolute value of x squared over three has to be less, has to be, has to be less than one. And this is another way of saying, well, one thing that you might that might jump out at you is that x squared, this is going to be positive no matter what. Or I guess I say this is going to be non-negative no matter what. So this is another way of saying that x squared, x squared over three has to be less than one. Right? I don't want to confuse you in this step right over here, but the absolute value of x squared over three is just going to be x squared over three, because this is never going to take on a negative value. And so we can multiply both sides by three. I'll go up here now to do it. Multiply both sides by three to say that x squared needs to be less than three. And so that means, that means that the absolute value of x needs to be less than the square root of three. Or we could say that x is greater than the negative square root of three, and it is less than the square root of three. So this is the interval of convergence. This is the interval 
interval of convergence of convergence for this series, for this power series. It's a geometric series, which is a special case of a power series. And over the interval over the interval of convergence, that is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to 1 over 3 plus x squared. So as long as x is in this interval, it's going to take on the same values as our original function, which is a pretty neat idea.